you're watching the Kate Fox Show, I'm Kate Fox, and I am here tonight with Charlie Sorrentino, also known as the Dog Chick. Yes. And Charlie, how did you get the nickname the Dog Chick? It was probably about 15 years ago, and I went by a different name, and I went to someone's house, and they had a little boy, he was maybe eight to 10 years old, and he said to me, what do you like, the Dog Chick or something? And I started to laugh, I was like, that's pretty cool. That's way better than what I have. And oh that's my, how I got you're that. You're kidding me. No, no. no. That's I had nothing brilliant. to do with it. It was this little kid. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh, I love it. Um, and now, so we are here in your, I want to say office, but it's not really an office. I call it a training center. It just makes a little okay. bit more sense to say it like that. And this is where you do, do you do all of your work here? Do you do it... Um, like at homes or does it vary? Most of the time I do evaluation, behavior evaluations. I do them here because I'm equipped, okay. set up so anything that you know a dog may um, need help with, at least I have things to, to test them with. Sometimes I do uh, in-home visits, if it's something like a separation anxiety where I'm not gonna see the behavior here, I'm only gonna see it in the home. Uh, regular training, usually, again, I like to stay close to home because I have everything everything here okay. right so. we were walking around before you have the cages you have toys you have right, treats right, you have right. everything yeah everything, everything yeah. so it makes sense right. okay now why do you do what you do dogs are so misunderstood and most of the time changing the dog's behavior is really based on teaching the owners what to do so if I can educate them then they can go home because they can't live in people's houses, <laughs> but then they can go home and hopefully they will practice and keep me posted, send me videos of what they're doing so that I can see, are they making progress or not? <clears throat> so it's really because there is such a big un misunderstanding. People assume dogs are human. They think they act like them, uh, they think like it, and most of the time they're completely wrong. So, you know, they look on the internet, they call grandma, and they're getting all these pieces of advice, which is nice as it may be, most of the time it's wrong. So people come in here and say, you know, my dog is biting because I went near her bone. How dare she do that? I bought the bone for her. Really? So yeah, so there's a, a big lack of understanding. And then I explain to them, that's very important. It's a, a prized possession. You carry a purse. Your husband has his money in his wallet. This is what's important to her. So what she's doing is actually very normal. Now we want to teach her. She lives with you. We have to kind of alter the behavior a little bit. Hmm. So, so that's my thing, to, to help people and their dogs to come together. So, so what is your philosophy? Kindness. Kindness, kindness. We have to understand we're all created equal. So it's not like because the dog does something bad, uh, the owner has the right to hit them or to yell at them. My thing is, you have to learn how to understand them. What are they saying? And that's the whole thing, getting into facial expressions, body language, they're constantly communicating with her. But again, humans don't understand that. They assume that the dog is gonna think exactly the way they do so if I can help them to understand then they go oh my god and I punished her you know and then I say, all right it's okay now we're gonna backtrack and now we're gonna get everybody you know where they should be she's doing this because and this is how we can change it so now is there a, a standard amount of time that it might take to change a behavior or to figure out why a behavior occurs, or it varies? Right, it varies. It, you know, dogs are as individual as we are. Some dogs come in here and they have, <clears throat> excuse me, dog-to-dog um, -dog reactivity when they're on leash. So I have stuffed demo dogs here, life-size, and we practice with that. This way there's no other dog that's gonna get hurt, but from a distance the dogs see these are the dogs and they make the assumption that it's real. So I get to see the behavior in action right then and there. Generally speaking, <clears throat> if you can get the dog to focus back onto you, create a positive association, 
then the dog says, ah, that other dog might not be so bad. Now, may never want to play with that dog, okay. but people just basically want to be able to walk down the block with their dogs. So we have to kind of change the association. Not so bad. Let's just keep moving on. So, but again, depending on how, how much the owners uh, absorb of it, how comfortable they are doing it, what's going on in the dog's head. So all these things are, are big factors. Okay, so, so. J like everything, it varies, it, it varies, varies, it varies, absolutely. it varies. Yeah. Okay, um, now what do letters mean? Letters are an indication that somebody went to school that they went to an organization that um, not only tests, but then they certify. So a CPDTKA is a certified professional dog trainer, knowledge assessed. So it says that this organization, uh, a teaching organization, um, has qualified you after like a four or five hour test. So they say, yeah, oh, okay, this person knows what they're doing. There's other certifications, uh, behavior, specialists so it's training and, and behavior but it really tells the dog owner that this person is formally educated you know uh, there's no regulations in this business so you could say oh I read this book now I'm a dog trainer you go you get a um, business card pass it out there's no regulations whatsoever so this tells the general public we have a formal education where this person does it and does that mean that they're terrible or terrible at what they do? No, but there's no way to know where did they get their information from. Right, so it could be anywhere. It could be, right, a, right could be anywhere, on the internet, a book, a, a video. So people really have to be very careful when they're, they're choosing a professional. Wow. I, so Okay, so how, how do people find, since we're talking about choosing a professional, mm -hmm. How do people generally come to you? How do they find you? Now, after all these years, really word of mouth. Okay. You know, I'm involved in a lot of the rescues. I've trained thousands and thousands of dogs. So my name is somewhat out there. But for newer people, I mean, it really, you got to advertise. You know, get yourself a, a website. That's what I do. And sometimes people will just troll the, the Internet, and that's how they find me. Now, you said get yourself a website. What is your right. website? Oh, the, just thedogchick.com. Thedogchick.com. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. I like it. Yeah. yeah. I like it very much. Um, we're going to take a quick break. Okay. And uh, we'll be right back. Now, Charlie, I wanted to ask you, what is the difference between positive and negative methods? Oh, this is my favorite subject. Oh. My favorite subject. Positive reinforcement is just very simple. The dog does something, you give a reward. Negative reinforcement is the dog doesn't do what you ask them to do, and then they implement a punishment, usually something physical, either um, a yank on the, the choke or a prong collar or a shock collar. So the other way is here. If you do this, you get this. The negative way is if you don't do what I'm telling you, you're going to get hurt. So then the dog will stop or will do what you ask them to do just to avoid the pain. So it's very barbaric, very, very all world. But unfortunately, again, I hate to say this, but the uneducated still go by those methods. They don't have enough education to realize that this is operant conditioning, classical conditioning, county condition. It's scientific. So if you um, ask the dog to do something, a few times you do it, and they go, oh, wow, this is what I get. I'm going to do it. They're not doing it because they want to do it for us. Right. They want to do it because whatever it is, the treat, the ball, the walk, anything that's positive, anything that makes them feel good, then that's how the behavior becomes reinforced, and then they keep doing it and doing it. Now you got a behavior. Now what is... Okay, so at some point, 
Do you stop giving the reward uh, food. once they've been conditioned? Yes, we do phase out food because, A, we don't want a really fat dog. And also, we want the dogs to learn how to do it without that. But we never take away praise. Ah, okay. Never take okay. away the praise. We always let them know they did it right. We loved it. A hug, a kiss, a pet, and occasionally throw in that treat. It keeps them saying, hmm, maybe this time. <laughs> so it's just a little, yeah, but it, it keeps it going. But once the behavior is solid, it's solid. So. Okay. Okay. That makes, okay. Um, what's the difference between a, tr a trainer and a behavior specialist? Okay. Trainers train new behaviors. So basic obedience, advanced obedience, sit, stay, down, come, that kind of stuff. Trainers can also do service dog training, therapy dog training. So trainers are, they're absolutely necessary. A lot of times we don't get to the point where people have to come to me to do behavior if they've done the right thing from early on. Uh, a behavior specialist deals with the emotional behaviors, any kind of um, dog to dog reactivity, stranger reactivity, um, resource guarding, separation anxiety, anything that's really emotionally triggered, that's what a behavior specialist is for. Hmm. And okay, so is most, do you find, and, and I'm sorry if this is no, a question no. that's, do you find that most bad, most bad behaviors are all emotional? Most Does of them that sound are, silly? except for common ones like jumping. Okay. Jumping is such a human reinforced behavior. You have a puppy, puppies are adorable. <laughs> they jump on your leg. What do we do? We pet them. We pet them. We, we, we them. kiss them. Oh, I love this. So now we're telling this puppy, you do that three times. Every time you do that, you get all this attention and you get pet and you get kissed. And so it doesn't seem like it's bad behavior. Now, puppy is 75 pounds and knocking grandma down <laughs> as she's walking in the door. And everybody yells at the dog. Right, because they're jumping. Right, and they don't realize that they actually created that kind of behavior. Interesting. So, I never yeah. would have thought of that. Yeah. I mean, it's simple. It is. It is. But you don't think. No. Look what I, it's, it's like when, um, say, I, I had a kitten. Mm -hmm. When you let the kitten, they're teething and they bite you. Oh, right, right. And Well, with dogs, too, I would same assume. Thing, same and, thing. And, oh, how cute. Oh, it's how so cute. cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then mm -hmm. out. Right, right. <laughs> and that's interesting that you say that because that's one of the um, the, one of the two most important things to teach puppies. Um, at a pro you have to properly socialize them. Get them to see everybody, babies, other dogs, uh, cats, birds, whatever. The more socialized they are, then you're not going to run into these problems later on. The other one is bite inhibition. So when you have a little puppy who's eight weeks old and they have those razor sharp teeth, we have to let them know in a way that they understand. Okay. Um, because otherwise you may have an adult dog and nobody's going to touch an adult dog and do bite inhibition training with a dog who's seriously going to hurt you. So with puppies, we yell. Yelping makes sense. Other puppies yelp when they're together, and one puppy bites the other one, and another puppy yelps and generally takes attention away. That's how this puppy learns that wasn't okay. Huh. But people do things like hold their mouths closed, yeah. bite their ears, you know, then oh. of course smack and throw them in the crate and all, all these other things. Very simple. Very simple. Wow. Yelp, walk away. Very interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. What are the most common training problems? Regular common ones, jumping, um, destructive chewing. Oh, uh, that's probably a big that's one, That's right? a big one. But again, today's world is different. When I was a kid, my mom was a stay-at-home mom. We, had a, we got a puppy. That puppy was house trained in a week because mom was home. Every time puppy had to go to the bathroom, she took it out. Uh, she would play with the dog. Then we came home at three o'clock. There was a lot of interaction with the dogs. Now, generally speaking, men and women are both working. Right. Dog is home by itself. They're bored. Yeah. That pillow looks good. So now they chew it, rip it up. Ah, now they feel better. Now you come home and now your pillows are torn up. People don't stop to realize there's always a reason behind behaviors. There's a, okay. So, but like I said, everybody's working. Poor dog sometimes gets lost in all of that. Which, well, it makes sense. Yeah. It, I mean, it, dogs, and I am not a dog owner. I love them, mm -hmm. 
but I feel they're like a child right. or a baby. Right. And I'm not able to take that on. So that's, yeah. but, but that's, I, I think some people don't realize that. No, they don't. They don't. They don't. They don't realize how much work goes into it. If you get a puppy, you better be off for the summer. <laughs> you know, I mean, because yeah. people get puppies, they throw them in a crate for 10 hours a day. You know, by the time they leave for work and mm -hmm. work and then come home from work, it's usually about 10 hours. Most people work eight-hour days. Now this puppy who doesn't know how not to go to the bathroom, they're not even ready for They come home and people get angry that the puppy has peed and pooped in the crate. So now this is the puppy's fault. Right. Because, but where else was the puppy going to go, right, and what do right, they do? Right. So a responsible person, don't get a puppy if you can't take care of a puppy. Agreed. So that's what <laughs> I but know. that's responsible. That's the best thing to do. So, and I get to play. I mean, yeah, enjoy with everybody Rosie else's here, dogs, you know, we, right? We, we, I get to play with other people's right. puppies, yeah. and I'm good, but I, good. I know I couldn't take yeah. it on, and that's... A conversation like I have with my children. Right. No, right. I have you guys. I don't want another baby. Right. 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 <laughs> yeah. And if you don't have the time, then it's not fair. Okay. I. Yeah. That makes sense. That's. So, what are the most common behavior problems? Unfortunately, again, behavior problems are huge, huge now. Uh, again, for all these reasons, people don't have the time. Um, they don't socialize. Here on Long Island, most people have backyards, fenced in backyards. Right. So what do we do? We open the door, let the dog out. Um, so they, even if you socialize them as a puppy but didn't continue, a lot of people work. They don't have people coming over at night. So sporadically, they have company. The dog's not used to seeing strangers right. come into the house, so we have issues with that. Um, um, dog reactivity on leash where people don't take their dogs for walks all the time so now the dog finally gets out and sees this other dog which he hasn't touched another dog in three years so now they start to bark they lunge pull or whatever so that that's a biggie resource garden whether they protect their food their bones okay. their toys that's another big one very instinctual behavior just doesn't work well when they're with people right. because they can snap, they can bite, they're just protecting what's important to them. And separation anxiety. Again, people have gone a long, long time. Some dogs are predisposed to some of these, these behaviors. Right. Generally speaking, it's you know what happens in the environment and over time, a lot of the rescue dogs, where they came from. So, but yeah, behavior problems are big now. We, we didn't see these 20 years ago. Wow. It's, well, they change as society changes, Absolutely. right? Yes. So yeah. e everything is affected. Mm -hmm. You know, the mom, dad, the kids, the Absolutely. pets. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, I would like to ask you a double question, I guess. Is there something you would like us to know about you that we don't know? And what message would you like to leave us with? The biggest message is... When people are picking a professional, they have to make sure they're a real professional. So I always do free phone consultations. So anybody who calls me, they can expect to have anywhere between a half hour and an hour phone call. Really? I want people to know who I am, what I do, how I got to do what I do, what I'm certified in, and I want people to learn to ask the question, number one, are you certified? If someone is not certified, very nicely say thank you and move on to the next person. That certification, that's really important. It's more important than somebody saying, but I have 20 years experience. <laughs> experience is tainted. You know, you may work with three dogs that, okay, they did this right. and everything's fine, but then you may come across another 35 that don't. If the, you don't have education behind you, you can't troubleshoot. So I really want people to know, find out who are they certified by. The other thing is what method, and we spoke about positive mm -hmm. or negative, find out 100%. Positive reinforcement professionals are jumping in the air to tell you that this is what we, we're all positive, we're wonderful, we will never hurt your dog. Negative reinforcement people, they kind of hide. Really? They use these little words like, um, 
for a shawl collar, they may say, uh, we use a remote collar or an e-collar. So they try to cover it up a little bit. Why wouldn't they say, a sh if, if why wouldn't they tell you right. what it is right. though? Well, I think because now more and more, people are uh, realizing that they don't want their dogs treated that way. So they kind of, so I'm hoping in the next maybe 10 years that these force trainers will be, will be out of the picture and it'll all be positive reinforcement people. So then at least we know every dog is being taken care of the right way. Even if somebody didn't know as much as another professional, at least they wouldn't be getting hurt. Right. True. So. Okay. Um, did I miss anything? Because I want to make sure I'm hitting on things that people really need to know. Um, no, the only thing really is that they have to learn that dogs are not humans. They don't think like humans, they don't act like humans. So when they do something that people, that you don't like, don't right away look to punish. Instead, look to find out. Go on the internet and say, why would my dog be behaving like this? And you'll know the difference between the people who know what they're talking about okay. and the people that don't. The people that do know are really going to make an effort to explain, don't get angry with your dog. This is not, they're not doing it on purpose or to be bad, so to speak. That's what you want to look for. And ultimately, you know, the best thing to do is look in your area to see if there's a certified trainer or behavior specialist. But no, they need to know what they're looking for. Okay. A trainer is not a behavior specialist. It's a different course of study. So trainers may have an idea of behavior, but that's not their specialty. Okay. So people need to make sure if somebody says, uh, yes, I'm a behavior specialist, uh, like I am, I'm a certified behavior specialist. I'm also a certified trainer. So I, well, because I started with training, and then, then I was uh, so fascinated by the brain. So I needed to know why, and then how do I help? So that's what people really need to find out what you need, and then look around, and then ask these people, let me see your certifications. Do your homework. Okay. You have every right to do that. Yes, I mean, yeah. it's, it's you. It's yeah. something that, you, it, it's part of your family yeah. that you're dealing absolutely. with. Absolutely, really. absolutely. So be kind, be understanding. That's, that's my big message. I love it. And your website again was? Thedogchick.com. Thedogchick.com. Thank you so much for Thank talking you. with us, Thank Charlie. You. Okay. The Dog Chick.